Okay, so today I'm going to show you some of the sentimental stuff that I'm decluttering. Sentimental stuff can be hard, but even in the sentimental category, there are going to be some things that are easier to declutter than others. So, may as well start easy. The first thing that I'm decluttering is this set of German World War II coins. It was a gift that I had given to my dad one Christmas because he was kind of a World War II junkie. After his death, I grabbed a few small things from his study that had meaning to me or, like these coins, that I recognized as things that I had given him. Since I'd been disinherited for being trans, I wasn't going to formally receive anything, so I just took a few things that I could put in my bag. But if I'm honest, do these coins really have any meaning to me? Not really. And other than the fact that one of his kids gave them to him, did they really mean anything to my dad? Probably also not really. And if I died, would my kid think that they meant anything to me? Probably not. And why would my Jewish kid want a set of coins from the Third Reich anyway? I think there's more than enough World War II memorabilia in the world, so I'm pitching these coins. And here's something that's been sitting on my shelf in my closet for years. I call this a fake heirloom. It's an antique porcelain cup from 1916 Germany. It says Merry Christmas on it, and I thought it was Kaiser Wilhelm there, but um, I was informed that it's actually another guy whose name I don't recall, but who I found out was kind of a Nazi precursor. Um, the cup was found in the home of my dead hoarder aunt-in-law, and I thought, wow, it must be a family heirloom. But the more I learned about the guy on the cup and where it was from geographically, I knew that this was not a family heirloom. It was just part of Aunt Dee's hoarding mess. But I held on to it anyway, thinking that it must be worth something, and at least I could sell it on eBay. Well, nobody wanted it on eBay. I thought it was because I used the wrong keywords and that I would try again later. I'm not going to keep trying to sell this dumb cup on eBay. Who am I kidding? This kind of porcelain cup is basically worthless these days. Nobody uses or cares about this kind of stuff anymore. Also, this guy sounds like he was kind of a prick. His time is long gone, and so is this cup's. So... Okay, sentimental paper. I have a lot of it. So for now, here is my smallest container of it. When I open it, I can see that I've already decluttered it at some point because there are four labeled but empty partitions inside. Must have been during my first attempt at the Marie Kondo method. But here is a cluster of letters that I can let go of now. These are all of the letters from my old Bulgarian pen pal, George, back from 1991. George is a great guy and he was a great pen pal, but guess what? We reconnected as Facebook friends a few years ago and now we stay in touch online. I even scanned these old letters and sent them to George and asked if he would like to have the originals back as part of his history. And he said no thanks. The scans were fun to read and they were enough. So if the scans were good enough for George, then they're good enough for me too. I don't need to keep storing these letters in my closet. Some of these letters made me feel really good to read and I will save them. And some of these others I will mail back to the sender. Like these letters from my cousin Maria that she wrote when she was in fourth grade and I was in college. They're very sweet letters and we were just talking about them a few months ago. I will scan them for myself and send her the originals. I think she would really enjoy seeing them and I don't need to keep them stashed away in a folder deep in my closet. Okay, so I went through a shoebox of sentimental stuff and while I didn't eliminate the whole box, I did clear about half of it, which means that I can hopefully consolidate it with another shoebox that needs to be decluttered. From this one, I pulled out all the letters from my mom. For some reason, 
Young me thought that someday in the distant future there might be a Dr. Kim museum, and every scrap of correspondence, especially from family, might have historical significance. Well, old me is coming to the realization that there is never going to be a Dr. Kim museum, and even if I ever got to occupy a corner of someone else's museum, they wouldn't need more than one of these depressing religious guilt letters to get the gist of this sad relationship. Also decluttered are all the cards and postcards that I sent to my son while he was at sleepaway summer camp. I thought that he might someday like these to remember those happy summer days. Well, I talked to him the other day about his memories of camp, and guess what? They weren't happy days at all. He hated it, but never told us because he felt bad that we'd spent so much money to send him there. He doesn't want to remember those days. He's never going to look back fondly on these cards. So now that I know the truth, I don't need them either. I found a whole bunch of hard copy pictures from a trip to Australia, and out of these 60 pictures that I found, found that I only want to keep three of them to look at. I know for sure that I have the rest of them stored digitally. I'm not even sure why I printed out so many hard copies in the first place, other than I was so excited about the trip when I got back, and I thought I would send these to someone. Who? Now, I don't even remember. Here's a report card from my son's third grade. If you're saving stuff for your kids because you think that they might want to look at it again someday, make sure you ask them about it. Again, turns out he absolutely hated his time at that school and has no desire whatsoever to retain any memorabilia from those days. In a similar category, I found this DVD from his first grade tefila. Again, he hated that school, and he's never going to want to watch this again, so I don't need to either. And here are a couple of medals from a little over 10 years ago. I'm not a sporty person, so I was never into trophies and medals and stuff like that, and I guess that's why these were stuffed into a shoebox. But again, if I died and my son were to go through this box, he might get the impression that these must have been important to me. While that time of my life was important, these medals in particular don't mean anything super special to me, so I don't need to keep carrying them around. And this cute pillow is something that my mom gave me after my dad died. It looks like she made it, but she didn't. It was made by a woman at her church. Apparently, the whole church was praying for my soul after they found out that I was trans. This pillow supposedly contains the scapular that my dad was wearing when he died, and it's supposed to be a talisman to help save my eternal soul. Well, I don't know that it does any good in a shoebox, and even though it was made with loving intent, the actual feeling I get from it is just a deep sadness. It's a cute, plushy reminder of how religious dogma poisoned my relationship with my parents for the last half of our lives. And here is one more fake heirloom. It looks like something my mom would have made back in Korea, but it's not. Someone just randomly gave it to me because they knew I'm half Korean. And I kept it because I knew that my mom wasn't going to give me anything of hers, so I figured I may as well keep this fake heirloom. Again, what is the point of keeping it in a shoebox? If I like it, I should take it out. I kind of like it, but like the pillow, it mostly just makes me feel sad. And I don't need any extra help when it comes to feeling sad. So, goodbye cute Korean hanky. I'm sending you to a K-pop fan from Post Crossing. Okay, and just like Raggedy Ann with the candy heart, I felt compelled to open the pillow to see what was in it. And actually, it's not even the whole scapular, and I can't even tell for sure if this even was my dad's because it just looks like a perfectly brand new um, piece of a scapular. It's just like a mass-produced generic piece of green felt with a, you know, the whole Mary and the thing on it. and So... Therefore, it 
is even less meaningful to me because this could be anybody's mass-produced piece of a scapular. So now I feel even less guilty about getting rid of that pillow. This hat looked amazing on the mannequin in the store. But it doesn't look amazing on me. And I can't really wear this hat anywhere. Where am I gonna wear this hat? It's practically new. How can I get rid of it? I need to get rid of it. What happens if I die and then my loved ones are looking through my stuff and they find this hat and they think, this hat must have meant so much to him, and then they wear it. How weird would that be? That would be super weird. I don't want to make it weird for them. I'm going to save them the grief, and I'm going to let it go. Bye-bye, hat. I barely knew you.